child pornography, child sex trafficking. Aren't these things that we're dealing with in these last evil days? Yes, we are. Many, can you all see how the, many of the young children are missing? And many of the young children are being uh, shipped over to different countries. Woe unto those of you who have corrupted the youth. Because our Heavenly Father, our King, is going to bring vengeance. And you wonder why this, these nations are going through so much trials and tribulations. You wonder why. Many of us need to ask ourselves, what is happening to the children? So many of the ancient Christians understood that taking affairs with young children and corrupting them was an evil and wicked thing. Why? Because in the ancient times that they lived in, in the Roman Empire, and in different areas, it was lawful to have sexual relationship with little boys. Go back and study the history of ancient Rome and those other ancient nations. How they would have sexual encounters with little boys. And you look in the time that we're living in. And you have men today. And you even have women today. You see it. And they have been corrupted. And have corrupted the young children. And we wonder why our children are growing up so fast. Do you see this? Now, I'm not there to speak hatred to those of you who may have made those errors, but you need to repent or you will suffer the consequences by our Heavenly Father and our King. He cares about the children. Let's go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter, because some of you think you're slick and you'll say, well, that's not in the Bible. Those of you who, who perhaps may be struggling with this, this lust inside of you for little children. Let's go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Well, it doesn't say, you know, don't have sex with little children. Go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Please. Let's go to the law. And understand the righteousness of the law. You understand? Go to Leviticus, 18th chapter, please. And let's look at the... 22nd verse says you shall not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination a lot of you don't like to hear that but you're going to deal with it in the judgment and some of you say well he's a little boy well what does what does little boys grow up to become if you're a grown man and you're struggling with little boys what does grown little boys grow up to be? Do they not grow up to be men? Do you understand? Thank you, my father, my king. Don't play with our heavenly father, my king. He's going to cover all bases so that way there can be no wickedness that can slide. Our ancient ancestors, those ancient Christians understood, those ancient anointed ones understood that corrupting boys was evil. And it was not of our, of our creator. And they were taught to flee from it. Let's look again. You will not have illicit sex. Now this is powerful here. This is touchy here. But I thank my father, my king, because he's going to deal with the issues that's hindering us. You can't call yourself a Christian and you have an issue to the point where you can't overcome these issues here. Because what that means is just like it means that you have a form of, as we say, godliness. You have a form of it, but you're denying the power thereof. You say you're a believer, but you're struggling with these issues and you're not mastering them. And so what you're basically saying is that he can't really change me. But woe be unto you. So notice how it says you will not have illicit sex. There's nothing wrong with sex when it's done the correct way. And you can read the scriptures and find out how Heavenly Father brought man and woman together to become one and to be fruitful and multiply. There's nothing wrong with it when it's done in its proper context and in its holy way. That's been ordained by the creator. But when it's done illicitly, when it's done illegally from him, then it's a problem. 
And uh, in the world today, when you look out on your social medias and you look out in your different areas, you see that this is being promoted heavily. And why many of you pastors today, you're not preaching against it strongly. You shouldn't fear mankind. Who you should fear is our Heavenly Father, my King, because he's going to deal with you. The blood is on your hands. You pastors out there, I say this humbly, and hopefully you can repent of your wicked ways. There's blood on your hands. And you're trying to wipe it off, but you can't. Our Heavenly Father, our King, your, He knows that you, people's bloods, their lives are on your hands because you are not telling them the truth. That can free them and cause them to change from the error of their way. But so many of you, you're caught up in money and status and fame and fortune to the point where the attention is centered on you yourself alone. You forgot about our King. You forgot about our Heavenly Father. And if you do not change and teach the true anointed doctrine, you're in trouble. Do you see this? So many of you on the internet doing Bible courses and Bible classes, those who it applies to if the shoe fits, wear it. And you're talking about all these other different topics. But you're not preaching the true gospel message that Yahushua would talk. You're not talking about the true message that the prophets taught. Or the apostles taught that what was passed down to faithful men. You're not teaching about that. So you can have all this, these, these different classes and all these different things and all these debates and all this different talk on all these different issues. But you're not dealing with the meat of it. You're not dealing with the heart of it. What our father, our king commanded his son, Yahushua, to preach to the people. Go to, let's look at the next one here. You will not steal. That's powerful, isn't it? Because we're living in a day where stealing has become normal. Piracy has become okay. There's thieves in the church. There's thieves in the synagogues. There's thieves in the mosques. Do you understand? People are so corrupt, embellishing, and doing all type of uh, Wicked things, you understand, to extort. And our master said not to do that. Go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. Go back to Exodus. Thank you, my father, my king, for your fire. Cleanse us of our wickedness. Because that's the problem. That's why the world is so wicked today. Because these shepherds out here who are supposed to be teaching this word, the problem is many of you slacking on your job. And in the name of Yahushua, and the name of his father, get back on your job. For he takes the, if you don't do so, he's going to take the anointing off of you, and he's going to put it on somebody who's going to do the job right. Thank you, my father, my king. Exodus, the 20th chapter. And let's look at verse 15. Listen to what Abba, Master Yahuwah said. He said, you shall not steal. That's cut and dry. He said, it. you, you shall not steal. It applies across the board. And we're living in a day where you have people out here who are thieves and they love it. They're not ashamed of it. But woe be unto you if you don't change your life. Thank you, my father, my king. Go to Exodus, the 21st chapter, and let's look at something interesting. Look at verse 16. Look at this powerful precept. It says, and he that stealeth a man and sell him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. All of you out there who are kidnapping children, some of you gangsters out there, who are abducting people and kidnapping them and holding them for ransom will be unto you. Will be unto you. I have a father, my king, got a judgment for you. Those of you who brag and boast and stealing men. You understand? Those of you who are in the criminal world, how you're, you're taking and abducting people and you think you're going to get away, but I have a father, my king, has a judgment for you. Those during a time of ancient slavery, 
And those, uh, not just black people, but other people too who were brought and kidnapped and abducted against their will, woe be unto those in the judgment. Those who did not repent, woe be unto them. Those of you who are stealing babies, those of you who are walking up to little children after school and lying to them saying, my mommy told, uh, your mother told, your mommy told me to come pick you up and you're lying to these kids. Those of you who are going up to little children saying, do you want some candy? And you're kidnapping and you're abducting the children to become sex slaves. And some of you even so twisting, you're murdering them. Woe be unto you. Master Yahuwah, his judgment is coming for you. Thank you, my father, my king. We're commanded not to steal. And we're living in a time where people are thieves and robbers. And, and everything's okay. It's promoted in the music. It's promoted in the movies, isn't it? All these things that are, are they not promoted in the movies, on, on commercials and television, isn't it? In cartoons, isn't it? And we wonder why we're living in a time where we're going through all this evil and people want to cry up and pray then. But it's because we're not being obedient to what our father gave to his son and what his son gave to the prophets and what was passed down to the apostles and what was passed down to faithful men. We're suffering because we're not listening to what he commanded. And the world, this chaotic world that we're living in, is a result of our disobedience. Thank you, my father, my king. Let's look at Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Go to Leviticus 19th chapter, please. Leviticus 19. Look at verse 11. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely neither lie one to another do you see how not only has the commandment you shall not steal been given to the children of Yashmael but also notice the intents do you understand how our heavenly father through his son through the ancient prophet is covering all bases do you see this to where you cannot escape he's telling us we shouldn't deal falsely even in commerce and trade and business, you have so many people who are trying to get over on people, hustle people, take advantage of people. He says, neither lie one to another. We're, we're so, thank you, my father, my king. The spirit of a thief has been so embedded into us as a whole. I'm not speaking about the anointed congregation, but many of us, we understand these things because our father, our king, has brought us out of these dark areas, hasn't he? So don't boast in your heart. Children of the Most High. But so many of us have, speaking as far as how the world is concerned, so many of us as a people have become thieves to such a deep degree to where we will begin to actually, with our mouths, manifest the actions of a thief. We will lie and become dishonest with one another. Do you understand? And notice the revelation that a thief, notice that stealing and lies, they're very, very closely knit together. When you are a thief, you're a liar. You can't be a good thief without being a good liar. And vice versa. Thank you, my, my masters. Now look at this. Let's go still going back to the Dadake. Those of you who have it or are reading it, as I find out King Lee, you need to really take some time and look at these things very carefully. You will not practice magic. That's powerful, isn't it? Look at the next one. You will not make potions. But let's go back to magic. Because we're dealing with a time where everything's so magical. We love magic today, don't we? 
Many children have become corrupted because you parents out there have not. I'm not speaking to the, those of you who want to continue to do that. Continue, but know that you will suffer the consequences to our Heavenly Father. When you take your last breath, you got something for you waiting on the other side. But for those of you who want to change and struggling, do you not realize, parents, that our Heavenly Father is going to judge you according to how you raise your children? We're supposed to train up a child. Read the Bible closely. We're supposed to train up a child. We're supposed to teach them about the Creator. So many of you are silent. You need to repent. You say you're a Christian, but you love magical things and you love it. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't watch cartoons. You know, now you have to be, you have to be very careful with these cartoons now. Because I'm here today to tell you that I find our King has revealed a lot of things to me regarding many of these cartoons. You got people out here who are literally implanting witchcraft and spells inside the cartoon and you parents have become so you allow the devil to bring you so to the point where you have become dumb down that you are not even paying attention to what your children are adhering to and then you wonder why your child is acting weird and strange your child can sit here and say abracadabra to you and many of you don't know what abracadabra means and your child just spoke forth a, a, a actual, please God, my, my father king. Your child has spoken forth an utterance that is pertaining to witchcraft and sorcery. But you say, oh, well, abracadabra is okay. So your child can say abracadabra to you. But if your child say, I want to learn about Master Yahuwah, you say, who is Yahuwah? If your child says, Mommy, I want to learn about Yahushua, you'll say, who is Yahushua? It's foreign to you, but they can say abracadabra to you, and you all right. Something's wrong. And for those of you, if you get offended, I'm not here to please you. I'm here to speak what my father, my king, has inspired me to speak. And if you don't like it, too bad. But woe be unto you if you don't change your ways. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. You will not practice magic. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18 chapter. And some of you pastors got this in the church. You're bringing witchcraft in the church and sorcery in the church. Deuteronomy 18 chapter. Start at verse 9. Listen carefully. Deuteronomy 18 start at 9. Verse 9. When you are, listen, when you are coming to the land which the Master Yahuwah, your Almighty, gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Now, this is going back to our ancestors. He's telling them when you get into the land, don't do these things. Verse 10, there shall not be found among you Anyone that make his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination, divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Do you hear me? You hear my father, my king speaking to you through their precious spirit as I'm led to read. And so many of you today, you've forgotten. I'm not trying to bring you under the bondage of the Torah. But as my father and my king are teaching the righteousness of it, so you can go back and look and reflect to understand that the ancient Christians, the ancient congregation that loved Christ, the Messiah, they, didn't, they were commanded to abstain from magic. They weren't sorcerers and witches and warlocks. Because that was all in the ancient world. Even what we're reading from in the land of Canaan, thousands of years ago, you had sorcery and those who dabbled in witchcraft. 
And when you look on social media today, and when you look on movies today, is it not filled with that? Do we not see the very things that our Heavenly Father and our King has commanded us not to do? Can you see how in the, the, the as we say, the 20th century, do you see how the things so far that I'm led to read to you, how they're everywhere, advertised and glorified? And we wonder why disasters is happening. We wonder why people are getting crazier. We wonder why children are becoming more wicked. It's because of what we as a people collectively are doing to anger our Heavenly Father. And for those of you who say, those of you who are atheists and say, well, I don't believe in him. Well, answer this question. Why is it that the things that he told us not to do, why do they exist? If you don't believe in him who is good, but yet the evil that the good one and his son taught against, it's here. So why is it that the evil is here? You understand? But the good that our Heavenly Father has put down here, that don't exist? He doesn't exist? That makes no sense. Thank you, my father. Okay, listen carefully. Go to, listen to this. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you. I'm going to read it again as I'm led. Anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Back in ancient times, people were taking the children. They were causing their children, their, their sons and their daughters to walk across the fire. Notice how they would use, oh, thank you, my father, my king. Just like today, notice how magic and witchcraft is closely connected with children. Because children, when, those of you who have children, when you look at them and when you observe them, they, they're very, please guide me, father, my king. One thing about children, that, and many of us were children, weren't we? Those of you who can go back to your own child life. One thing about children, when they are born, they, their mind, they are so in tune with all things. They soak up everything like a sponge. Do you see this? They have a true nature to want to know who our Heavenly Father is. And the devil knows this, do you understand? But parents... They were, just like in ancient times, they were letting the things of witchcraft influence their children. And our Heavenly Father told them not to do that. Listen, verse 11. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Aren't these things being advertised today? Aren't there reality shows that has necromancers being advertised? And being praised where people are coming to them so they can learn of their dead relatives. Don't we have, uh, thank you, my father, my king. Don't we have things, I, thank you for calling it out. Don't you have things like uh, wizards and warlocks, like Harry Potter? Little children playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And they can sit here and summon dark magician. Oh, thank you, my father, my king. I remember when our father, my king, allowed me to experience and to look at the children as they would play Yu-Gi-Oh! And they would bring forth Dark Magician Girl and they would take cards like Swords of Rebellion Light. They would take cards like the Book of the Dead. Genzo, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Do you understand? And little children can say Yu-Gi-Oh! And when you look at the cartoon, you can see that Yami Yugi, he was an Egyptian god. It was a battle. The Yu-Gi-Oh was a was a. I don't care who don't like it. Yu-Gi-Oh, that so many children were was it consumed by. When you look at the origin of it, you parents need to look at it as you're led. When you look at the cartoon and you look at the origin of the individuals, they will tell you that Yu-Gi-Oh was an ancient card game that was done. It was a battle of duels between the gods, and you had Zodia, the, the forbidden one. And you had these children. I found my king told me, my son, look at the children. And they had to bring me out of that darkness because I remember when I was around the little children in my youth, when I was led to play and counsel them and I saw and I played the game as well. I didn't understand it. 
But I find my king suffered and allowed me to understand what was going on. And these children, they can say Yu-Gi-Oh! They can speak forth that utterance. But they don't know about Yahuwah. They don't understand. We're living in a day where you parents, you're going to be judged for what you allow your children to suffer. The ancient church, the ancient congregation of Yahushua, they were more aware. There was, this is spiritual warfare. And many of you, you're just letting the devil just take over your household. And you wonder why your marriage is not working. You wonder why your children are gone crazy. You wonder why everything in your house is all shaken up. It's because you allowed the devil to creep in. And you go to church thinking that everything's okay. But you got some pastors, they'll even let you play Yu-Gi-Oh! in the church. Thank you, my father, my king. Woe be unto you if you don't change. Thank you, my father, my king. The children are so smart. They know all this stuff. But when it comes to the word, many of them, they don't know because you're not teaching them. Listen carefully. Look at this, my family. Still in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, look at verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the master Yahuwah. And because of these abominations, the master Yahuwah, your almighty, do drive them out before you. The reason why I have the father drove those Canaanites out it's because they were doing the same thing. They fell victim to the same sins. And our Heavenly Father was telling the children of Yahshua, when you come into the land that, I give, that I've given you, do not learn to do after the things that they have done. This is what he's telling you to do. Listen. Listen what he says. Now, there's a lot of people out there. I hear you. I said it myself in my ignorance and my father, my king had to deal with me. You have so many people today. They say you cannot be perfect. Don't they say that many of you believe that lie. You cannot be perfect. No one can be perfect. Well, listen to this here. Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Verse 13, you shall be perfect with the master, Yahuwah, your almighty. He commanded us, my family. I love you. Stay in this word. And as they lead me, I'll see you again. In the name of Yahushua and his father Yahushua.